In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between a round trip and a multi-city trip. Furthermore, common terms used in the airline and travel industry are going to be discussed. Let's begin! Round trip refers to the journey from origin to destination with a return to the place of origin. It may have the same fare for outbound and inbound and or the same routing for its outbound and inbound. This PNR created in Amadeus GDS shows the itinerary of the passenger who will fly out of Auckland Airport on Saturday, November 15, aboard Air New Zealand flight number 429 at 12 p.m. and arrive at Wellington International Airport at 1 p.m. He will return using the same airline with flight number 418 on Tuesday, November 25 at 10.10 a.m. and is expected to arrive at the original city at 11.10 a.m. Both flights will leave and arrive at the airport of the same country. In this example, the country is New Zealand. Hence, this is considered a domestic flight. For domestic flights, it is suggested to be at the airport at least two hours prior to departure. At a minimum, you need your boarding pass and a photo ID such as a driver's license. After you land on a domestic flight, you wait for people in front of you to get off. Then, you disembark, head to baggage claim if you check any luggage, and continue with your day. The PNR also contains records of the fare calculation. For example, in this PNR, the base fare for the outbound flight is 112.17 New Zealand dollar, while the inbound flight is 164.35 New Zealand dollar. Therefore, the total base fare is 276.52 New Zealand dollar. Remember that the base fare doesn't include the taxes incurred in the trip. NZD is a currency code. Currency code is a three-character symbol of a currency according to the international ISO standard. As a rule, the first two letters denote the name of the country. The currency coded is the currency of the country on the itinerary. For example, NZD is a currency in New Zealand. Can you identify what these currencies mean? If yes, pause this video and write your answers in the comment section. Once done writing your guess, play the video to continue watching. Here's another example for a round trip. The flight is from Heathrow Airport going to Cairo International Airport on June 14 and returning on June 30. This is an example of an international flight as the flight arrives in a different country. It is recommended that travelers arrive three hours prior to an international trip. In order to fly internationally, you have to have a passport. Your passport is evidence that your country of residence is allowing you to leave. In some situations, you may also need a visa. It is usually issued by your country of arrival. Essentially, a visa is your country of arrival allowing you to enter. Airlines need you to present your passport and fill out paperwork before they provide a boarding pass. The security screening process may also be a bit more thorough. International flights are usually longer because you are flying farther. You may receive one or more meals as you fly. The higher your class is, the better the food will be. You may also have access to in-flight entertainment. When you arrive at the destination, you may also be asked to fill out an arrival card. This is evidence of where you are coming from, where you are staying, where you are going during your stay in that country, and who is going to be with you. For an international flight, you have to go through the arrival gate and customs. The arrival gate is where you will show your passport and visa to the border agent. The customs is where you declare anything you have brought with you. Here's the fare construction for the given international flight example. Note that the base fare is expressed in NUC. It stands for the Neutral Unit of Construction. All international fares are coded in NUC and later converted to the local currency of respective countries. This creates uniformity in fare construction globally. NUC is equivalent to the US dollar and has been designated by IATA as the sole unit of constructing a fare between two cities. Even though local currency exchange rates may vary from country to country, NUC level remains constant. At the end of the base fare breakdown is ROE. It stands for Rate of Exchange. IATA provides monthly updates of currency rates of exchange used by the industry for fare construction. For example, 
during the period when this ticket was purchased, the 1,123.02 NUC was multiplied by ROE worth 6.749630 Egyptian pound. The total base fare can also be seen here, and that is 7,580 Egyptian pound. Remember that for international flights, the currency is converted to the currency for the first city or country on the itinerary. In this example, the first flight is from Cairo, Egypt. Therefore, the currency NUC was converted to EGB. In this fare code display, this is the base fare. These are the taxes, surcharges, and other fees. And this is the total ticket cost. Let's have our last example for the round trip. This is an excerpt from the PNR accessed in Amadeus. The reservation is confirmed for one seat on each leg. The outbound flight, which is from Heathrow Airport going to Los Angeles International Airport via paris de Gaulle Airport, is on October 2. The inbound flight, on the other hand, is on October 12. The outbound flight is not a non-stop or direct flight. It has a connecting flight at Charles de Gaulle Airport. As seen on the map, the itinerary involves several countries. Therefore, this is considered an international flight. When we say connecting flight, it means the next flight in the itinerary that you're waiting at the airport to take. The passenger will travel between the origin and destination via an intermediate point where he disembarks from one flight and boards another. Connecting flights take at least two different planes with two different flight numbers to reach your final destination. Each flight requires a separate boarding pass, but they're on one itinerary. A layover, on the other hand, is the time you spend at the airport between these two flights. In this example, the passenger will have an hour to board the next flight. Generally speaking, whenever you book a flight on any airline, it treats the trip as one complete itinerary. If you then don't show up for any portion of it, the rest of the unflown flights will be cancelled and then subject to a change fee and possible fare difference if you then try to rebook. At this point, let's talk about the circle trip to differentiate it from a round trip. When we say circle trip, it usually includes multiple stops along the route of travel before returning to the point of origin. For example, LaGuardia Airport to Detroit Metropolitan Wayne County Airport where the passenger will stay for more than 24 hours. Then we'll go to George Bush International Airport. There, he's going to stay for another day before heading back to LaGuardia Airport. A circle trip, therefore, is a journey that starts from one point and returns to the same point by a continuous or circuitous air route. It is priced as a series of one-way flights. Both routings and fares of outbound and inbound are different. Here's another example for the circle trip. The departure is Singapore Chani Airport and the arrival is Narita International Airport on December 23. Then, the passenger will stay for a few days in Narita before catching another flight going to Kansai International Airport on December 29. Finally, on January 7, he will travel back to Singapore Chani Airport. This itinerary includes three separate flights that take you to two different cities before returning to the place of origin. The first stopover is in Narita and the second is in Kansai. When we say stopover, it typically qualifies as anything that lasts longer than 4 hours for domestic flights and longer than 24 hours for international flights. Circle trip is a form of multi-city flight as it combines flights between several cities into one reservation. It's a journey that is broken for longer than 24 hours at more than one point on the trip. We talked about the circle trip earlier. Now, let's learn another form of multi-city flight called the round the world or RTW trip. An RTW trip is considered a complex airfare and takes time to plan as it involves multiple destinations, dates, airfares, and even time zones. But if you're looking to cover as much of the globe as possible, this can also prove to be more economical option. Some intermediary agencies can customize your RTW trip to last anywhere from 4 to 24 months and stopovers from 5 to 25 cities as long as the rules of the fare permit. Remember that in RTW, it's a must to have the place of origin and the end of the trip in the same country. 
the itinerary should also involve crossing the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. In this RTW trip example, the journey begins from San Francisco going to LaGuardia. The next flight that could be on another day is from LaGuardia to Gatwick. Passengers will have a stopover, then proceed to the next flight going to Mumbai. Another flight will be going to Hong Kong. Then, after several days in Hong Kong, the travelers will go to Bangkok before returning to San Francisco. Note that the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans are crossed as well as the Ayata areas 1, 2, and 3 are covered.